Okay, firstly, let's assume that thousands of years ago, there was a great flood on our planet. This is mentioned by many cultures and civilizations and in many ancient texts, right? Yes, you're correct. Flood myths are indeed found in various cultures and civilizations around the world. These stories often share similarities, suggesting a common cultural memory or a widespread event that influenced many societies. The most famous of these flood myths is probably the story of Noah's Ark from the Bible, but similar accounts can be found in the Epic of Gilgamesh from Mesopotamia, the Hindu scriptures, the ancient Greek myth of Deucalion and Pyrrha, and many others. While there isn't direct scientific evidence to support a global flood of the magnitude described in these myths, some researchers speculate that these stories could have originated from regional floods or other catastrophic events that were significant to the cultures that passed them down through oral tradition. I will take this great global flood as a fact and let's assume that there were pre-flood civilizations on planet Earth. I want to believe that these civilizations were advanced technologically and spiritually. Now let's exploit what caused the global flood. Exploring the idea of advanced pre-flood civilizations and the cause of the global flood can lead to fascinating speculative discussions. Some theories suggest that the flood could have been caused by natural phenomena such as a comet or asteroid impact, massive volcanic eruptions, or even shifts in the Earth's crust leading to widespread flooding. If we consider the possibility of technologically advanced pre-flood civilizations, some interpretations propose that these ancient societies may have reached levels of scientific and spiritual understanding that allowed them to manipulate the environment, alter the climate, or even harness advanced energy sources. However, their advancements could have also led to unintended consequences, such as environmental degradation, depletion of resources, or triggering natural disasters. In some speculative narratives, the downfall of these advanced civilizations could be linked to their misuse of technology or disregard for the balance of nature, ultimately leading to a catastrophic event like the global flood. This interpretation often carries themes of hubris, warning against the dangers of unchecked technological progress without ethical and spiritual guidance. While such ideas are intriguing to explore in fiction and speculative discussions, it's essential to distinguish between scientific evidence and imaginative interpretations when considering ancient history and the causes of geological events like global floods. All right, I cannot argue with your opinion that we must respect science and scientific evidence. But if there were advanced pre-flood civilizations, they should logically possess great, powerful weapons like the nuclear weapons we have today. The idea of pre-flood civilizations possessing advanced weapons comparable to modern nuclear weapons is certainly intriguing and often explored in speculative fiction and alternative history narratives. However, it's important to approach such conjectures with caution and recognize the distinction between scientific evidence and imaginative speculation. While there's no direct evidence of pre-flood civilizations possessing nuclear-level weapons, some proponents of alternative theories point to ancient texts and mythologies that describe powerful or destructive weapons used in ancient wars or conflicts. These descriptions range from fiery projectiles to divine weapons capable of massive destruction. Interpreting these ancient texts through a modern lens can lead to various theories about what these weapons might have been, with some suggesting advanced technological capabilities beyond what we typically attribute to ancient societies. However, without concrete archaeological evidence to support these interpretations, they remain speculative hypotheses rather than established historical facts. Additionally, it's essential to consider the broader context of ancient civilizations and the technological advancements they achieved. While some cultures undoubtedly developed sophisticated engineering, metallurgy, and other technologies for their time, the leap to nuclear-level weapons as we understand them today requires a vastly different scientific and industrial infrastructure, which is not supported by the available evidence. In summary, while the idea of ancient civilizations possessing powerful weapons is intriguing, it's crucial to approach such speculations with critical thinking and recognize the limitations of our current understanding of ancient history and technology.
My theory is that there were two major, advanced pre-flood superpowers slash civilizations. They possessed weapons similar to today's nuclear weapons. They were competing each other and a war started which gradually led them to use their ultimate weapons against each other. As a result, a nuclear winter formed around the planet with enormous clouds which then produced heavy raining. Your theory presents an imaginative scenario that combines elements of ancient civilizations, advanced technology, and catastrophic events, echoing themes found in various myths and speculative narratives. The idea of two powerful pre-flood civilizations engaging in a devastating conflict, ultimately leading to a global catastrophe akin to a nuclear winter, is a compelling concept for exploring themes of hubris, conflict, and the consequences of technological misuse. In this scenario, the use of weapons comparable to modern nuclear arsenals could indeed result in widespread devastation, including atmospheric disturbances leading to prolonged periods of darkness and heavy rainfall. The notion of a nuclear winter effect caused by the release of particles into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and altering global climate patterns, is reminiscent of scientific theories about the potential aftermath of nuclear war. Your theory also integrates elements of ancient flood myths, suggesting that the heavy rainfall resulting from the catastrophic conflict led to the inundation of large areas of land, contributing to the global flood described in various cultural narratives. While your theory is speculative and not grounded in empirical evidence, it provides an intriguing framework for exploring alternative interpretations of ancient history and mythology, as well as contemplating the potential consequences of advanced technological capabilities in ancient times. It's a testament to the enduring fascination with the mysteries of the past and the possibilities of what might have been. I have another theory. That deserts on Earth like the Sahara Desert or the desert in China, Middle East and ancient Mesopotamia area, Northwestern USA, Australia, South Africa and even in Chile were created by these massive ancient weapons during the ancient war. There's scientific evidence that deserts used to be very fertile many years ago and contained a lot of flora and fauna. What do you think of my theory? Your theory posits an intriguing connection between ancient warfare, advanced technology, and the formation of deserts on Earth. While it's an imaginative concept, it's important to approach such theories with critical thinking and consider the available scientific evidence. There is indeed geological and paleontological evidence to suggest that many regions currently classified as deserts were once more fertile and supported diverse ecosystems. For example, the Sahara Desert is known to have undergone cycles of desertification and greening over geological timescales, driven by changes in climate patterns such as shifts in the Earth's orbit and variations in solar radiation. While these natural processes have played a significant role in shaping the Earth's landscapes, your theory introduces the idea that the formation of some deserts could be attributed to the destructive effects of ancient weapons during a pre-flood conflict. This speculative notion adds an imaginative layer to the discussion of desert formation, suggesting a connection between ancient civilizations, technological warfare, and environmental transformation. However, it's essential to acknowledge that attributing the formation of deserts solely to ancient warfare requires robust empirical evidence, which is currently lacking. While ancient conflicts and environmental degradation may have contributed to localized changes in landscapes, the formation of deserts is typically understood to be the result of complex interactions between climate, geology, and ecological dynamics over millions of years. Overall, while your theory offers a thought-provoking perspective on the potential interconnectedness of ancient history and geological phenomena, it remains speculative and would benefit from further exploration and scrutiny within the context of scientific inquiry and evidence-based research. I mean take a look at the planet's physical map. There are massive deserts in the entire North Africa and ancient Mesopotamia and Middle East. We do know that these territories were inhabited by very ancient civilizations and there are countless scientific evidence that there were advanced people over their ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians, Greeks, Sumerians, etc. 
I don't want to talk about alternative historians who mention the presence of mythical or alien beings in these territories. So, I believe that these territories were the center of one of the two global powers that took part in the ancient world war. Then there's the desert of China, which is also known for its ancient history. No one can doubt this. Your observation regarding the geographical distribution of deserts and their association with ancient civilizations is indeed compelling. Regions such as North Africa, Mesopotamia, the Middle East, and China have rich histories dating back thousands of years, with evidence of advanced civilizations and cultural developments. It's undeniable that these areas were once centers of human civilization, where thriving societies flourished and made significant contributions to art, science, agriculture, and governance. The ancient Egyptians, Mesopotamians, Greeks, and Chinese are just a few examples of cultures that left enduring legacies in these regions, shaping the course of human history. The correlation between the locations of ancient civilizations and modern-day deserts raises interesting questions about the relationship between human activity, environmental change, and landscape transformation. While natural processes such as climate variability and geological shifts undoubtedly played a role in the formation of deserts over millennia, it's plausible to consider the impact of human activities, including deforestation, overgrazing, and agricultural practices, in exacerbating desertification in some areas. Your theory suggests a more dramatic scenario, proposing that ancient warfare and the use of advanced weapons may have contributed to the creation of deserts in certain regions. This speculative idea adds a new dimension to our understanding of the interconnectedness between human history, technological advancements, and environmental change, prompting further exploration and investigation. Ultimately, while your theory offers an intriguing perspective on the origins of deserts and their relationship to ancient civilizations, it's essential to approach such hypotheses with critical thinking and to consider the complexities of geological, environmental, and cultural factors that have shaped the landscapes of our planet over time. Continued research and interdisciplinary collaboration are crucial for unraveling the mysteries of the past and understanding the dynamics of human-environment interactions throughout history. Okay, so that was all. This is Lazeros from Greece. Hope you liked this video. If so, please like and share, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe!